I know the beautiful young Steven Spielberg, when you were 15, he first approached you about playing this part. I don't know whether at 24 or 23, whenever you, play, you actually made the film, you, you still felt, I, I know what this guy is, I know how to do this. Maybe you spent the immediate, in, intermediate years checking him out. Uh, no, not really. I mean, Tintin has always kind of been on my radar. You know, it's just something that is a personal thing. Like, I think I always, like, see myself as him to a degree. I think a lot of people see themselves as him. Uh, there's an ownership that people have over him for some reason, you know. Um, uh, so uh, when I was 15, when I first met Stephen Ford, like, you know, I was not prepared to really be working with him at that point in my life. You know, I hadn't done enough work. I hadn't worked with enough people, um, you know. And also, I'm glad the kind of film didn't come together at that time because it would have been a totally different movie. I think waiting until the technology has gotten this good was the best move, I think, that Peter and Stephen made. Um, but, yeah, by the time we got to making the film, I felt really comfortable, ready to go and, 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 and do, do my version of Tintin, you know. I know that you're quite the fan and you were in the Tintin shop here in London on Floral Street and the guy behind the counter sort of spoke to you about the fact that he'd heard that Spielberg was going to make this Tintin movie not realising you were part of it and his one line was he better not mess it up. Yeah. And I don't know if there was a point where you thought because it's a big, big production 140 million Peter Jackson's there Spielberg's there performance capture I don't know whether it was a point you you thought, okay, we, we've got it right, or whether you always sort of have to wait till the film's finished to know that. Yeah, you never know. I think I, I appreciated the risk that Stephen and Peter and, and Kathleen Kennedy were, were, were all taking, and, and then, you know, um, it's not big in the States at all. People don't know mm. who he is, you know. And, and not that, like, the States necessarily decides whether a movie is successful or not. I think actually now the global market is kind of deciding that. Um, and, and I think the strategy uh, behind releasing this film internationally first is 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 actually more about giving it back to Europeans. You know, like we I think we as a continent own Tintin, categorically. I think releasing it in the states and then bringing it to Europe would, would be terrible. So, um, you know, yeah, we, we 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 all came from the same place. We wanted to respect the 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 origins of this of this creation and 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 the artwork and the characters and the way they're represented. And you know, for us that was that was crucial. And and having this technology and being able to uh, maintain the aesthetic of Hergé was also really crucial too so I'm glad we got to use this this kind of medium to, to realise the film well those, for those people who don't really know much about Tintin I, I know he made his debut it's in impossible Tintin. I know well Tintin's debut in 1929 there might be some kids I'm sure in the States who are kind of just getting familiar with him oh now. yeah those guys have no idea but he made his debut uh, and it, since then he's sold 350 million books uh, I think 80 languages there's been radio theatre movies there's a bronze statue in Brussels to, to Tintin and Snowy with all that sort of you know kind of love there for him was it a weight? Did it feel, I've got to carry so many different people's love of this character through this movie? Yeah, I mean, I think you can kind of, you can either choose to think about all of that or just choose to kind of ignore it and just try and do your version of it. I mean, I feel like I have like a, a kind of primal understanding of this character, just having read a lot. I went back and read a lot about uh, Hergé and, and where he was in his life um, when he wrote, the, the when he kind of came up with the character and... and you know, he was writing this for a long time. I mean, basically, this was like his kind of adult life. Tintin was his entire adult life. Um, you know, so uh, just seeing him progress through the 20th century is kind of interesting. So I kind of went back and looked at all the books. Um, I started drawing Tintin. You know, I really focused on the physicality of the character. He's such a dynamic uh, character, the way he's drawn, even though it's still illustrations. You know, he always looks like he's moving, like going somewhere very quickly with like the utmost curiosity and intrepidness, you know. Um, so uh, kind of trying to embody all of that was really crucial. And uh, me and Stephen worked hard on the physicality. And, and uh, we actually took panels from the comic books and, and put them up in the walls of the studio. And literally, if we were trying to find like a moment of inspiration to try and bring us right back to the actual origins of something, we'd look up and literally take a pause from the comic book and say, right, let's put this in this scene. Let's use that moment with Haddock for this scene. And you know, literally drawing from, from the artwork. Yeah, I, know, I know that Stephen, he's still got that sort of bright spark of, of like a kid when he when he gets to make a film. And yeah. certainly in this case, he hadn't used performance capture before. I know that it's been very successful with, with Peter Jackson's Weta, where they've done, you know, the Gollum and, and King Kong and, and then Caesar recently in, in, in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But then on the other side of the coin, you've got movies like Polar Express and Beowulf and, and A Christmas Carol and, and Mars Needs Moms. Films that we kind of, in Ireland, regard as a little bit shit. All different technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the performance capture itself at that core where an actor will play out in a studio an entire computer world, it's, it's still technology that's but, evolving. But it's and the process in which they've used that technology. We've used the, the technology in a different process, you know. Right. So that's like it's, like, it's like a, it's like a completely different aesthetic or an approach to a process, you know. It's like it's the way we've mixed our paints is completely different to the way they've mixed their paints, you know. That, sure. I think that's the way you have to consider it. So I, I would never put this... Tintin into the category of those other films. It's a completely different process. Right. Um, 
Sorry, that was quite. That was but quite, no, but I do think that you're in, but you are in an area where where people do feel there's always been a problem with, you know, especially with the Zemeckis films, where people look like they've had major facial surgery that morning. Where you know you'll take let's take Daniel Craig and make him look like Jason Isaacs. You know these sort of uh, decisions that we can take an actor and completely change their physical appearance. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost do not look like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. So there is that payoff where people and I know Stephen and Peter kind of were very careful about this to make it look like this is not the cold dead eyes of a killer. This mm -hmm. is not a waxwork. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking from that point of view as an actor. There was always that concern, I'm sure, that will yeah, this no, turn no, out no, right? Yeah, no, 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 categorically, yeah, no, no, truthfully, the, 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 those films that you listed there yeah. were not successful in a way that they connected with the audience because people felt afraid. They, yeah. they, they didn't trust it. They didn't like what they saw. I, I mean, I think, you know, uh, I was speaking to Joel Lettery, who's the visual effects wizard, things like Avatar, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, uh, Tintin. Um, you know, the way he, you know, he doesn't 100% trust in the technology you know, which I think is really smart. Like, we're not just gonna let the technology rule all the decisions. Like, an animator has to come in and fix things. The technology can't be 100% accurate all the time. And I think that's maybe where those other films went wrong. They trusted 100% in the technology. Whereas Joel Lettery, so successfully, uh, I mean, he's an amazing artist, you know, is able to um, think about the human and audience experience first before trying to pioneer the technology. And I think this film, you know, is, is really the game changer in a way. I think when you see this film, I, I really feel Haddock when he looks at Tintin, he says, no one takes my ship. And you see spit come out of his mouth and you see that pain in his eyes. Um, you know, that it's, it's, we're so far away from those other kind of, um, and not to just pinpoint out Zemeckis, because that's terrible, yeah. but, but we're yeah. so far away from those kind of movies that I think we've really entered a new time for this technology. Very quickly, I've got like 10 seconds left, I think, maybe one second. Evelyn. Uh, I should say, uh, your, your, your mom, uh, uh, Eileen, and your sister, Catherine, that suggests Irish blood, cause especially with a name like Catherine and Eileen. And you're, you're quite talented and, and you're good looking, so I presume there's Irish blood, is there? Uh, I don't know. Thank there you, though. Be. Thank you, though. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming, yeah. I like, I like, you know that kind of, you know, kind of classic Irish music? I don't know what I don't even know what you call well, it. Well, traditional Irish music, not, yeah, the kind of reels and yeah, yeah, and all like that. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all that stuff. I don't like for some reason every time I hear that, like I it's in the blood. Maybe it is, yeah, maybe oh, it is. I'll bring you a CD next time. Great, awesome. All right, son. Yeah, yeah. Cheers.